Hello fellow old schoolers, it's on the Long Island Cup 3.0, a huge old school tournament between, yeah, just a bunch of different brews. There'll be a top eight and we are about 65 players here. So all in all, uh, that means to get to the top eight, you can lose a single match. <laughs> And if you only lose a single match, well, you will be uh, pretty secure to get to the top eight. But with this many players, uh, losing two matches will likely kick one out of the top eight here. Uh, it will all come down to this, yeah, to the details. Well, how many points have your opponents had? How many wins have you had uh, two to zero? Uh, and how many defeats uh, have you had one to two? So um, yeah, uh, all in all to make things uh, simple, you can only lose a single match. There'll be seven rounds of the Swiss where the top eight from that Swiss will qualify into the quarterfinals, semifinals and the finals. I have three cameras on site here, uh, so we'll have a bunch of games recorded. One of the cameras will be following me on Composition A and my adventures throughout the tournament. We have another camera on a random table that'll just record whatever games comes up there. And the third camera was kind of acting up so uh, we only have a few games from that camera uh, and that will follow another deck uh, primarily martin's brew that i'll get back to later on this first match is myself and composition a in the first round of the swiss uh, first up uh, i'll just have a few pictures of uh, some prices from the tournament uh, the this tournament is made by the long island crew and it's been I mean, it's been amazing. It's a, just a huge work these guys put into it. So thanks so much, you guys. And uh, thanks for everybody uh, showing up and participating. It was a blast. Let's go over uh, the pictures here. And um, yeah, if these are not your thing, I'll put down a timestamp and uh, so you can go straight for the first match. I might make a more in-depth video about the, these prices, these pieces of art and uh, uh, everything. Uh, we have a sketch from Drew, Drew Tucker here, uh, an original sketch for City in a Bottle, and uh, yeah, just a bunch of fun and uh, great stuff here. Uh, tickets for the uh, Dust tournaments in Copenhagen, Altos by Jesper, um, and uh, yeah, uh, Tier 1 MTG. Um, was here, which is a shop in Denmark, a card shop, and they uh, donated some cards as well. And we have that invisibility again. Uh, that's for the second prize because, yeah, the second best is invisible according to tradition um, here. It's all in good fun, of course, just ripping on each other. So in this first match, I'm coming up against uh, Dead Guy Ale. Now this really surprised me because I had anticipated that this meter would be a lot of burn and no juice ambience and a lot of uh, robots and the deck and stuff like that as per usual. But how wrong I was. <laughs> it's a completely different meter here, uh, at least partly. First one here, Dead Guy Ale, kind of like a sibling. Uh, I need to mulligan here and actually we're cutting a bit forward while I'm shuffling through the deck. I have to mulligan twice in the first match here. Um, so that's not good. Uh, didn't really like the hands I drew. Yeah, mulliganing again here. Really trying to <laughs> shuffle it up. We'll cut a bit forward as well uh, while I sh sh continually shuffling my deck. Okay. So this is the third hand. Digging for something useful here. Uh, I don't like going below this it's really really dangerous uh, getting below um, five cards in the starting hand because it's so difficult for a mid-range deck to make anything work you do need both a lot of mana and you need something to cast uh, so I'm really giving it a good think here on what to uh, on what to remove so starting off with a two card disadvantage here we'll yep okay so Let's go. Uphill struggle here. At least I'm on the draw, so I get some draw, a single draw here. And then a mind twist. So I kept that hand because now I can kind of just, it doesn't equalize it entirely. We're getting a scrub land and a dark ritual. Very, very nice first picks here because it, it mana screws him. 
and that scrubland will um, make me able to defend myself a bit. Dead Guy Ale will feature Jusum Jensen's sinkholes and stuff like that. Ancestor Recall here. So, yeah, that was, that was a keeper, that hand. I only have a single land though, but I got those three Moxen. Sorry about the glare, you guys. Uh, this angle was off. Uh, all the other games will have a different angle, so we so we can avoid the glare. But I didn't know. Uh, I only um, saw it after I checked this first recording. But yeah, as said, it won't uh, be that way in the other ones. Disenchanting my Sapphire here. I'm sick holding his scrubland. So uh, it's really a battle for uh, our lands. Both of us have the ability to uh, crack mana if we smell that that's a good idea. And uh, he has seen that I, I missed a land drop or two. Stusumjin coming out with the City of Brass. So that mana fixes me at least. And gets me into blue mana. Here's his blue marks, but he doesn't have the double black mana. And uh, that guy Ale, just like me, kind of needs the double black mana to function, but unlike me, he has Dark Rituals to kind of mitigate that, that's one. Using that to crack out my scrub land. Okay, he has a single mana more. Okay, soft applauding the cow and then using the final black mana to activate the factory and attack me. So only getting three points of life from that uh, soft applause at Jusum Jin. And now I'm back to a single black mana. No, I'm not, I have a black mox, <laughs> calling his swamp. So yeah, really going for his black mana here. It is not very common to see a planes in a dead guy ale. I, personally, when I play it, I, I like to have everything as swamps, but he probably likely does it uh, to negate blood wounds or something. Cracking his sapphire here with a disenchant. This is just really pressuring each other's mana. I have no idea how many have been lost at this point, but every inch of resources has been used just to kind of keep the other guy off our back. Okay, sinkholing my City of Brass here, coming down, coming in with the factory for two points of damage, putting me down to 10 points of life, and I'm mana starved now. Attacking again, down to eight points of life. One more time, down to six. Yeah, this is not good. I haven't even done any damage to him so far. The only point of damage from that City of Brass is taken. Again, down to four points of life here. We need something. Oh, it's curtain call for the first round. Okay, got something here. Hypnotic Spectra coming out under that very, very annoying glare, but yeah, I'll fix that. So we have a 2-2. I won't dare to attack with it. Down to four points of life, It I can. anything will <laughs> kill me. So if you attack with the factory, I just need to block it. At least it will put a land away from him, putting him down to three points. Yeah, he attacks here, knowing that he'll likely get a fair trade, getting a, a Spectre out of it. Now, will oh, he has a fourth land mana drop here, so I can still play Juice and Jins, and now sinkholing my underground sea. Forgot to take a point of damage from the City of Brass, though. Not that it will likely matter. Um, discarding the Brain Geyser here. Ooh, he drew into an ancestral recall. Here we go. Three cards for him. And he is finally he has secured his mana position here. Now oh, disenchanted my my jet. Okay, city of brass coming in. Balancing. <laughs> so that is a crucial. Yeah, I'm sacrificing one of my life points here. But it's so important. Uh, destroying, no, he should be keep one lane, but we rectify this. I remind him in a bit that he's allowed to keep a single lane because I have a lane. Then I need to discard two cards. That's a Jusum Jin and something else. Not likely to play it. So uh, it'll buy me some time at least uh, before I die um, because he'll need to deploy his mana sources before I can cast a big beater. Though I can't use that City of Brass many times. Okay, this is... Okay, I'm, yeah, going down to two points of life, getting a Spectre out here. Reckoning that I need need to get something in here. Sort of plush, is it? Putting me up to four life again. But I wanted to nick some cards from his hand, um, if able. But at least, I mean, those two points of life, it's a life increase of 50%, right? Okay, Black Lotus is coming out. Chaos Orb. 
okay, so one of the lens, see what it hit. Yeah, it just it slides a bit, but it it cracks my scrub land. It graciously allows me to keep my city of brass as it, as it, it does damage to me. So I can only use it three times. Another city of brass, that's not good at all. He has a dark ritual in his hand. And a hypnotic spectre from him. Mox Pearl. Starts to plow showing the spectre. Hanging on <laughs> with my nails here. Factory coming down from Dead Guy Eel. Blocking Factory. Uh, gives it a good think. Okay, passes the turn to me. Oh, I elect to attack with the factory. Soft to is my factory, putting me up to six points of life. So I'll likely have some removal for his factory if he tries to block or tries to counter attack. Otherwise, that would be an insane play. Oh, he really? He, okay, he tries to attack still. I soft to plusher, brings him up to two points of life. Gives him two more life. So he's somewhere above 20. <laughs> <laughs> haven't haven't put a hand on him yet. The money tutor here. Yeah, what to pick? He has scrub lands, but he doesn't have access to blue mana anymore. If he has a dark ritual, he can power out a juice gin perhaps. Just finish me, unless I have another sort of plush, which which isn't that likely. But I don't know. Passing the turn right back. Could take a land as well, depending on what he has in hand. Black Lotus coming out of Composition A here. Cracking it and sinkholing one of his goblins. Yeah, I don't want a double black mana. And I know his mana starts. I saw a Juice on his hand. I think he has a Dark Ritual as well, so I think that actually saved me that move. Soaring. Oh, and another black mana, so we can. But I disenchant it. <laughs> With the white and the red marks. Underground C. Okay, the more. I actually need those lands because I don't want to use my Cities of Brass in this position. Not if I can avoid it anyway. Oh, but okay, I'm, I'm sacrificing two life here just to get an Underworld Dreams on him. It's a debatable play, but I need to get some damage in here. Okay, Badlands coming out. At least I have two black mana now that aren't Cities of Brass. Okay, Sushi coming out. Passes the turn. Okay, now I'm strip mining his scrub land, so he doesn't have access to white mana anymore. I'm doing that uh, obviously so he can't remove my sushi or my underworld dreams. Getting in for four with the sushi and one damage from the underworld dreams. And again. And he has to discard. What an insane game this is. Actually pulling. Pulling a hit here, putting him down to four points of life. He gets a swamp though. Not a plains. No white mana getting in. And <laughs> he loses that match. That is incredible. Uh, I think it's because I, I nicked the correct lanes. So, and just luck. I mean, the sequence here. <laughs> what an insane game. Just crushing each other's lanes like this for so long. And after mulliganing twice. Um, just made it work because he didn't have access to white mana at that crucial uh, point in time. So we're going to sideboard here and go into match number two after that extremely <laughs> lucky uh, turnaround from composition A here. Let's see if that guy Eel can equalize the score here. He's on the play. Nope. Okay, he's mulliganing here. We'll cut a bit forward. Yep, and actually he had to mulligan twice, just like me in the first match. So kind of a brutal start from him. Pretty damn unlucky. It's never a good thing, as said, uh, particularly for combo and mid-range decks and stuff like that. Let's see. Okay, starting off with a library of Alexandra. That would be a great start usually, but he's down to four cards now because he's also on the play. When I went down to five cards, I was on the draw, and that that helps. 
So getting out a couple of mocks in here, he's trying to save up for the library, likely, or he might be mana starved. Anyway, coming out with a Juicem Jin here. Under that glare. Black Lotus as well. Okay, so now he needs to do stuff. Getting down a city of brass. Let's see, does he have a source to plowshares here? Time walking. Likely digging for an answer or something. Uh, nothing yet. Oh, and it was a sushi. Okay, never mind. It was a sushi. Couldn't see. Couldn't quite make it out. Disenchanting it here. I think I've sideboarded uh, all the sushis in in this match, just in an attempt to kind of overpower uh, him, uh, because we have similar creatures in our decks, and he might have sideboarded uh, artifact removal out. Though we see he didn't do that, uh, he disenchanted my sushi, and uh, yeah, here, disenchanting my Black Lotus, getting a City of Brass, Ancestor Recall here, I'm pulling well ahead in card advantage. And now cracking his City of Brass. I don't mind him keeping his library for now. Um, because I anticipate I'll put on a lot of pressure here. So he'll need to play his cards before he gets into range. Uh, play his other lands if he has them. Uh, just to fend me off. And I want his colored mana gone. Don't want him getting an ancestral recall. A uh, double black mana if I can help it. So it is a bit of a brutal tactic here, but just trying to crack him out of any colored mana. Now his dilemma is, should he save up for that library and try to get in uh, the draw the draw engine going, or should he commit here? Playing a Black Lotus. Dark Ritual. That's five black mana. Sinkholing one of my lands, getting down a Chaos Orb, and Chaos Orbing the other black land. Man. So yeah, he's just going all in on that land destruction strategy. But he hasn't made a second land drop, and he would have. He, he would have done that here because, let's see if it hits. First of all, yeah, perfect hit here. Very nice flip. He's taking the City of Brass. Yeah, but this he has one card in hand. It just screams he doesn't have a second land drop. So I should probably, I don't have a second black mana, but now I do. Two draws and there's a jet. So do some gin. Oh, I drew into an Ancestor Recall, can't play it, because the City of Brass is gone. Five points of damage here. As a Spectre. Seven. Nicking a card. Getting a Deucem Gin. Nope, that's it. Land Destructed out. Good game. <laughs> Second round here. Bit of a bum rush, um, but uh, yeah, composition A uh, made the first cut here, uh, two to zero against that guy Ale. The first match was really, uh, really an upheaval. I, I think I should have lost that one. The second match, he was kind of mana start, but I mean, in this matchup, mana starvation is part of the game, right? Because we'll just crack each other's lands. He was just. Uh, more unlucky than I was because he didn't draw into additional mana after I cracked um, that city of brass. So um, yeah, uh, so far so good. Up one to uh, one game uh, from one match and up two to zero. So that's good for the score, right? Let's go over the deck pictures here. We have a beautiful dead guy ale here. It's a tried and true archetype uh, that has fallen out of grace uh, for the last couple of years, I think, at least where I'm from. But uh, it is very strong mid-range deck. But like Disco Trolls, uh, it suffers a bit from having a, a bad matchup against the deck. I tend to think most mid-range decks struggles against uh, con control decks. So uh, I think that's why lately we have we haven't seen much of uh, Dead Guy Ale, and uh, it also seems at least here that. Uh, Disco Trolls is uh, slowly fading away uh, at the moment. Um, other stuffs are in the foreground, like Atok and Burn Decks and stuff that is great against the deck. 
Now, Alan, who is uh, the brewer of this particular deck, has made some changes. When he started this game, he actually had uh, four sync codes here and he's taken out the Armageddon. But otherwise, this was the deck he played. It resembles Composition A quite a bit. Though, when I made uh, Composition A, we have it here, uh, it was a different route as I started off with mono black, then added a red and then blue into it. And then finally, uh, I reckoned that I needed some white. So, there are some differences here. I don't have Dark Rituals, but I have like access to Wheel of Fortune and Brain Geyser and uh, Red Blasts after sideboard, for example. So it makes the Underworld Dreams element uh, more efficient. But in this brew I took here, I only have two Underworld Dreams, testing that out. And um, instead I'm opting for more creatures, having put in those Sushis and an extra Singia Vampire, I usually only run with one. And then I've tried to make the sideboard very dedicated against artifacts uh, like robots and uh, and the deck, because uh, especially the deck is what I'm struggling against uh, with this uh, brew here. Yeah. yeah, I'll get more in depth with uh, my deck as we go along. Uh, for now, I'm signing off and we'll try to just pump these games out. <laughs> I'll really try to, to crack another one out as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and I will catch you later on.